-hmm. Yeah, so um, this exercise is just a, a quick warm up. And I have, you know, I have a, you know, two very quick ones that we can do that um, are easy to translate for the Zoom world. I will say. So we're going to focus on this first one very quickly and briefly. It's it's just it's the cross and the circle, um, and I've seen Boal doing this with 300 people at a performance once, is to get the audience warmed up as well. Um, and so with your right hand, and I don't know if there's mirror image in there or not, or just raise your you know one of your hands, your right hand, um, and you can uh, just use your point um, finger, and you're going to draw a circle in the air in any direction, it doesn't have to be uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, it's in any direction, you just draw a circle, right? Now you stop that hand and then you raise your left hand. And then with your point finger, what you're gonna do is draw a cross or a plus sign. It doesn't have to be exactly cause, it could be right in the middle. So a plus sign. <laughs> okay. Now you stop that, then you raise both hands and then you're gonna draw both at the same time. A circle with your right and the cross with your left at the same time. <laughs> and it's really tricky. I will say this, I, I go by like weeks without doing this and then it gets really hard again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here, let me back up a little bit. Let me try one more time. There's a little more distance again, here. So raise, like, raise your right. So a circle. And then you add the cross. And then it's really hard to do both at the same time. Yeah. And it, but it's not impossible. And that's something that, you know, like you get a group and you get everybody to uh, come together to do this quick warm up and, and, and realize that we do have um, ways to use our bodies to improve and learn uh, skills. Uh, to be present, to focus, and, and, and to improve. And so this is also, you know, you might not get, get it right the first time or the second or the third, but if you keep practicing, you will get better. It will get easier. Um, and this is also a, a metaphor for life or for everything we're trying to do if we're find, trying to find a solution for a problem, right? Might not be easy or, you know, obvious the first time, but the more we keep at it, uh, the easier it will become. Another uh, very quick game that he. Let well, me uh, ask you a question about the last sorry. game. I'm sorry to interrupt you. But yes. what skill would we be working on when we're doing this? Um, what what skill would we be working on? We're 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 so we're really trying to do two tasks. So we, we have like you know right and left hemisphere of the brain. Yeah. Yeah. Together because we're engaging both sides of the body at the same time, and each side has to do a different task. And so it, it's just uh, something that we normally don't do. We don't normally engage uh, both sides of the brain for, uh, in, in, in different tasks at the same time. Uh, you know, sometimes we're just like the analytical side or the creative side. And so it, it's just, um, it's a warm up for, you know, mind and body <laughs> to yeah, yeah. And, you know, practice and do something different. Also just some, like, it's always an interesting invitation in the beginning of a workshop. If people never done theater or theater of the oppressed, they come in and like, they're, they know they're gonna be asked to do something they haven't done before. So you start right away. But so like, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of and everybody in the you know, majority of the people will fail at that. <laughs> so it's just saying like, it's okay. Great, right? great. <laughs> and we're gonna improve. And, and so if it's a series of workshops, you can always start by, you know, using this in the beginning all the time. And you will notice that progressively throughout the week or the series, you get better at it. Uh, I am to gonna keep practicing this. I am gonna keep practicing this, yes. <laughs> uh, and so another quick uh, warm up that Boal has done that um, it's just a fun, uh, like high energy, uh, also to uh, help uh, participants really focus, gives an opportunity for everybody to create and find new movements, play with making sounds and rhythms, and also just working together. So this one, you, you need to work with a partner. So uh, there are different exercises, some that you do by yourself, some that you do in a whole group, and some you will do in a, you know, with a partner. So this one will be a partner. So you and I will do it together. Um, and so the first thing, and there are different stages, and I'm going to explain the stages as we move along. So first, what we're gonna do is one of us will start by counting. We have to count to three, and then we keep repeating one, two, three, 
one, two, three, one, two, three, but we're going to alternate. So you can start if you want. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now you go to two. We're starting again. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we keep going for a while, right? So this is just okay. a demonstration. We keep going for a while. Uh, the facilitator normally will say, we'll just then, everybody's doing this at the same time with a partner. And then you can just, as a facilitator, you can just say like, number one. That means that the next person to say number one will have to substitute number one by a different sound and a movement. Okay. So distinguished sound and movement can be something very simple um, but it will become the new number one, which means that as we keep repeating the numbers, you know, the other person needs to be able to, the person who didn't create needs to be able to repeat that sound and that movement. Right. So as you are creating it, you're also teaching it. Uh, for yeah. the first time. So okay. um, we'll, we'll just, let's just do one round of uh, one, two, three, and then the next person to say one will give us a sound and a movement. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Boop, boop. Then you say two, two three. And now boop, boop. two, three. Boop, boop. Two, three. Boop, boop. Two, three. And so forth. Now we can call number two. And then somebody else will create number two. And then eventually number three. So let's just keep doing. And then um, why don't you create the number two? Uh, and then at some point, one of us will create number three. So starting okay. with number one. Boop, boop. Three. Boop, boop. Three. 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 Boing. 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 And so forth, we continue like that for a while. And of course you take your time, you really establish that sound the movement. You can use your entire body if you are able to, you know, standing and engaging, but like a lot of focus. Um, you're teaching your movement and your sound. I'm receiving, we are uh, allowing for some spontaneity. We're breaking the ice. You do this in a group, uh, in, a, in an entire, like a, a a full, you know, a room full of people, um, as long as they're working with partners. In the beginning, nobody wants to, you know, because they feel silly. Right, right, and right. You can get people laughing really quickly with this exercise. And if you do it at the same time, nobody's paying attention to other partners because they're focusing on their own and what they're doing and what they're creating. Then at the end, you can always ask for anybody, any volunteers to share what they created. You see the variety in, uh, of uh, sounds and movements, uh, the creativity of people, and it's just fun. You will get people laughing. And once you get people laughing, <laughs> they are relaxed. And so, you know, after that, then you can start addressing some uh, other maybe issue-based work. And you start talking about some topics you want to discuss. But uh, like having people just be present and relaxed uh, in an exercise like this, it's just always a great ent entry point. So those are two Cla very classic theater the oppressed games that are part of the book games for actors and non actors. Um, but there are so many other ones that I, I wish I could demonstrate but on zoom it's a little hard. No, I love those two, especially beep beep. Blah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. I like them both. Yeah. yeah. They're fun. <laughs> so where would we go next if we were doing Boel. We did some warm ups. Could we do any other of his techniques, just the two of us? There's a lot. Uh, well, we would, uh, I mean, there are different things. Uh, I would, of course, spend a lot more time doing a lot of different games, right? You want to get, you want to, uh, you know, the mechanize the entire body and work through all the senses. And so there are different exercises you can do. And um, I would always go first to then image theater work for theater of the oppressed. 
So image theater is a technique that we don't, um, we don't need words. We just use our bodies to express ideas and, and emotions and feelings and stories. Um, we embody, right? And we can, um, there are warm ups where you can just like, if I ask you to, you know, uh, show me with your body what an image of summer would look like. And there's no right or wrong. So you can just like freeze in a position in an image, mm -hmm. right? So that's one way of, uh, that's image theater right there. So okay. uh, warm up, there are different ways of getting there. But in theater field press, we are thinking about our own oppression, right? Sometimes there are thematic, like thematic workshops um, that you do. Now people want to specifically talk, talk about bullying or people really want to talk about the workplace. So you can contextualize what your work, but um, you know you can just start by like you know let's think about the word oppression, just the word oppression, what it means. And like so, showing an image of oppression, um, and then we don't just stay there, right? So we can state the image of oppression, but then we can also think about what is the opposite of that. What's the antidote for that image you just created? right? The solution of that oppression, what it would look like. So again, you embody that through an image. And then the whole work of Theater Field Press is to try to get from that first image of oppression to that second image of the solution. How do we do that, right? So that's when we little by little start creating the, the, the stories and the scenarios and the role play and finding solutions. It's like all of the images we didn't see between those two, like how right, right. How do we uh, work from that first image to that second image? How do we get there? And that's when we got to form theater. Um, it's, I haven't really done 101 at Theater of the Oppressed uh, with people. <laughs> I'm always working. Okay. But, you know, I remember seeing um, students uh, sculpt other students in the process of finding the solution and involving other people oh. that have similar feeling so okay, yeah. um, well, image theater has a, a like a, it's a huge body of, of, of work as well there are so many different stages so I'm just giving an example of, of, of that but there's definitely the role of you know uh, the protagonist becoming the person who's a sculptor and then using everybody else as the clay um, and then sculpting them and you can tell stories you can think about beginning middle and end you can think about um, you know sculpting people into um, you know, the rainbow. So that's like a different technique, the rainbow of your yeah. feelings and your desires, you know, like identifying everything that's within your mind, like the internal oppressions you have, but also all the desires you have related to your story. Um, and, and, and so, you know, sometimes you need more than one person to show your story of oppression. So then you start identifying characters as well. You can clearly see who is the protagonist and who is the antagonist in the story. Uh, so you would uh, sculpt people into those positions. Um, and then you can change like this in person uh, makes more sense because then you can have them either near or far of each other. So you can really work with a space you're in as well right. to tell the story or to change the story. Um, and so there is there is a lot of that. So there's a lot of uh, form theater, um, image theater work that leads to then um, a story that we can grasp and understand and we have uh, you know, um, enough information to do a role play where we then add words and movement and we're acting. You can, what we, uh, while we used to call it dynamize image theater as well, add repetitive movements or words, internal mono monologues of each character. There's so many uh, varieties and variations. And it really, as a facilitator, for me, I always, you know, I, I, I of course, I have an outline uh, and a plan. But as the work is being developed, I see, oh, this is a great opportunity to now get more information from this character because you can like you can sense and you can see there's more to that image. And, you know, you can just tap on the person's shoulder and, and then have them just, you know, like free stream of consciousness start talking and just like from that perspective, from that image and how it changes. Um, so there, there is a variety of different things you can do. I always have those like in my back pocket <laughs> and I can bring forth it depending on the group I'm working with and what's happening. Um, but then the idea of creating a, a story or a role play for a foreign theater, we call that the anti-model when we're gonna do foreign theater. Um, we just have people actually telling each other like their stories to each other. So you can, there's, I mean, there are of course different ways of approaching this, but you can, just turn to the other person and share what's your story of oppression and then you talk about it. Um, 
and then you can put that into images and then somebody volunteers their story or the entire group may choose one of the stories that they resonate uh, maybe as a collective you know uh, it might be like someone else's story that I chose, but I can resonate because maybe I've been, uh, you know, I've experienced that before, or I, you know, I could experience that in the future, so I can resonate. So it depends on, on also the group. If you have a very, uh, if it's a group, let's say, if you're doing a wor workshop in the workplace, you know, they all have something in common. They all maybe work there. So it could be stories of you know, uh, revolving around that and everybody can identify with some, something. Um, then you share a story and you choose one. And then when you choose one, you start role playing, you get some information, you role play. And at, at any moment, anybody else who's just watching the role play, who's a spec actor now, can stop the action and replace the protagonist and try uh, something else, something different. So um, cool. And, yeah. So, cool. so let me ask you two kind of personal questions. Number one, <laughs> Do you think it helped that you were an actor before you discovered Boel? Do you think that made a difference for you because you're more f comfortable being on stage? Um, yes, in, I think in many ways, uh, you know, yes. And, but I, I also see it not being, I know theater scares people a lot. <laughs> I sometimes have to change the names of my workshops. If I put them, if I put in theater there, you know, I know some people who could benefit from it are not going to come. Um, and so it's very difficult. It, it definitely, um, you know, like I would be the first one to sign up for a theater workshop, but it's I'm right, not. Right, right. <laughs> it, it's, it certainly helps uh, to understand uh, from an actor's perspective, the tools of the actor, right? Which is my body, my imagination, um, you know, my voice. Uh, but like the, especially the idea of imagination, Wow uh, talked a lot about like, we can't, um, come, you know, get to a solution to a problem if we cannot imagine that that problem doesn't exist anymore, if we cannot imagine or if we cannot desire that, you know, to be gone. So we have to be able to imagine what it would look like, what it would it feel like in the body and like in or my facial expression, like how would I stand if that problem, if that oppression was not there? So even being able to imagine and then embody that is huge. And a lot of, uh, you know, for actors, it's easier to get there maybe because they have to work with their bodies and facial expressions and imagination to become different characters all the time. So sure, it's easier. It's more like, a, you know, you get a head started working a lot with your imagination. And so you can imagine. Um, it might be harder for people who are so sometimes, you know, um, stuck in that problem, uh, that oppression. It's hard for them to even imagine not having that, or it's been so long that they don't even know. Right, 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 right. They see what it would, you know. But it's it's just that it's just that practice of being able to imagine, and so yes, it's helpful for sure. But um, it's, you know, I always say like. No theater experience is necessary for this work. Exactly. <laughs> so, so my other question is, since the pandemic, has that limited your ability to teach? And what have you been doing since, since the pandemic? With I know you teach several styles of improvisation as well, yes. but with uh, Boel, what, what has happened with uh, that? So I, um, it took a while. I, I started, I want to say it was the end of uh, 2020. I went, uh, fall of 2020 that I started again teaching theater of the press and it all online so far uh, which you know has of course um, I had to made, make some changes in terms of uh, some exercises that I used to do all the time I'm currently not doing because it's just it doesn't really transfer uh, you know I there are maybe other ones that are more suitable for um, uh, the zoom world it, it really depends on the group sometimes you know people are all together in a location sometimes they're all in diff individual windows you know with mm -hmm. their own zoom accounts and 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 so it really depends but um i've been able to uh do workshops for educators and also work with kids um you know to pilot some of the like forum theater online and actually um this coming week, I'm going to do with the same group of eighth graders um, for five days in a row. We're going to do a forum theater workshop. So we're going to start Monday with a lot of games and warm ups, build slowly to image theater, and then end the week with forum theater and then reflect, you know, a big reflection about it. And it's all via Zoom. And 
there is a combination of a lot of them together, but also a few of them, you know, in their own Zoom windows. And so, yes, it's possible and uh, it can be done because a big part of this work is also very reflective. And so we can talk about, you know, and we can, we, we just have to adapt. And sometimes I explain, so this exercise, we normally do it like this, but we're going to adapt right now. And we're going right, to do it, right. try it this way, right? It's not exactly the same, but, but it is possible. So I, I am able to do, and I'm as of now scheduled to do some in-person theater field press for April, hopefully, but outside. So where is this going to be? So this is for a closed group with like survivors. Oh, okay, all right. So it's just uh, it's just for them, um, but outside. Wonderful, wonderful. And so we'll see how that's going to go uh, as well. But um, yeah, and you know, hopefully, little by little, we'll we'll actually. The good thing about it is that when we are more open to be in a room with other people, we'll have different options. We can always do something virtual if we want, and but we'll be able to go back to in person at some point. And so it will be nice to have these two options. That, that'll be fantastic. And I'm very fortunate. I'm about two and a half hours away from you, Maria. So that's <laughs> my good fortune there. And um, what other projects are you doing in, in the spring and summer? Do you have other things coming up that maybe listeners could sign up for? Um, so I, I just got really busy with like contracts for very specific projects that I'm working uh -huh. with uh, groups or uh, like there's some that are definitely with like family, family engagement. So that's like a multi-generation. Um, but um, I think the, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to offer some for the community as well. I have not yet put those together because I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, make sure I can do everything that I'm doing, but I am uh, specifically focusing on some projects right now um, that add, uh, that in, I use a lot of, so I, I don't call it theater the oppressed, but uh, it's more like on the theater uh, or drama for change. And it's, um, it, it does, um, reflect a lot on um, issues of diversity, uh, equity and inclusion. Uh, and, and so developing work for um, schools, but also for educators. And so I'm gonna be piloting a lot of work in the spring in classrooms, um, using theater to talk about um, identity, stereotypes, prejudice, so very specific issues. Um, and then a lot of, you know, a lot of that I borrow from Boal, um, as well, but also some different Im improv techniques or so, you know, from playback, from a variety of different applied theater um, options. So that's what I'm doing. I'm hoping to offer some workshops for the community, but the only one I have so far is a, like a straight meditation course that is going to be offered to the public in June in person in Sarasota that's open uh, for registration. Other than that, everything is like a already set closed workshops that I'm doing. Good for you. That's yeah. most excellent. I'm really happy for you. That's great. Sad yeah. for me, happy for you. <laughs> but I uh, always, uh, you know, check if I, if I'm doing anything, always check the social media, you know, Atomica Arts you, or, or the website because it will be posted there. Great. Well, you've been so much fun to play with today. Thank you so much for teaching me two games that I'm going to continue to practice, especially. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know it's it's uh it's so interesting um to do that and like and one of the tricks is like it's easier to do it without looking at yourself on zoom doing it as well I bet I was thinking that maybe looking at myself is a downfall too yeah. so you have a beautiful day and thank I thank you again so much my pleasure hi I will okay be thank you so much Margo thank thank you no I just stopped the recording